Hi everyone, I'm Sandy Lene. Welcome to Psychic Creations. We have a very interesting show for you. Our guest speaker today is a regional and also local paranormal investigator. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Please welcome to Psychic Creations the awesome Jason Nell. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, really thank you for being here. I know I'm very anxious to get to know you, as I know our viewers are, so I have a ton of questions for you. Well, let's have All, it. Right? All right. Question number one. Are you a native of Nevada? Yeah, I'm born and raised. Oh. Yeah, born in cool. Reno and I spent most of my life there and up until recently moved to California. Uh -huh. so, nice. Yeah. Nice. You're going to move back to... Uh, I haven't figured that out oh. yet. So I, we'll, we'll get to that when we get to that. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's just get right into the thick of things. When did you become interested in the paranormal? I want to say about 93, okay. 92, 93. I was eight or nine, and I had a black shadow walk through my hallway in the middle of the night and disappear into a wall. Um, after the terror stopped, um, I did turn into curiosity and it was ever since then so I really started investigating and researching when I was 13 so it's been about 20 years nice what an experience yeah oh yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't go in the house for a week well, I don't blame <laughs> you for that was it considered a haunted house though no or? nobody really knew anything about it there was no stories or reports about it interesting so. very interesting and outside of that, um, have you had other personal experiences with the paranormal? Oh, all the time. I mean, honestly, I had an attachment for about 15 years. It was um, never malevolent, but he just—he was always just there. When things were bad in my life, he showed up. Oh, you know, it, okay. It's kind of like, I always felt like he was watching over me. Sure. So, But yeah, I'd, I'd see him from time to time. He'd make himself known. Did you ever discover who it was, or I got the name Billy, but I, that mm -hmm. was that was the most I could get out of it. Well, sure, and, sure. Uh, though the name I did, I, I the house we lived in, we had we found a Vietnam era flak jacket. Oh. Okay. And we did I did find out later on that the guy that had that jacket's name was Billy. Is that right? Yeah. I'll be darned. Well, sure. So I still got it though. Do you oh, really? Yeah. yeah. What a treasured item. Yeah. I'll be darned. Yeah, you don't find that in an empty house every day. So. No. Do you think Billy led you to it to discover it? I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> he, he doesn't give me a lot of information. Oh, he's, okay. he's always been around. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> I can understand that. Well, what inspired you to establish a paranormal investigative team? That was actually my family. Hmm. It was my uh, my brothers and my sister. I, they, the team was founded by family. Oh, nice. And they were the ones talking about it one and they all had experience doing it. You know, and it's like everybody's like, well, why don't we just finally do it? Let's just do it. Nice. And it was uh, it was all or nothing. Mm -hmm. And it, it wasn't even my idea. They, they threw it oh. together, knew I had the most experience, and they just kind of fought, fell in line and sure. said, all right, let's lead the way. Oh, nice. So, so it was just started out with the three of you? or uh, No, there was a few of us, but it was all mm -hmm. family. There was uh, me, my brother, my sister, my brother-in-law, oh, someone nice. we consider a brother, you know. It yeah, was, right. It, it, it started by blood. Mm -hmm. So. How nice yeah. is that? Well, I think that's a nice beginning. Yeah, family and business. You, yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. And you are titled? Sinister Sightings Paranormal Society. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. That's kind of a cool name, isn't it? Yeah, it, it doesn't really sound too good to some people, so we use we have a backup name that we use. Mm -hmm. It's a Revenant Research Group, so it doesn't have the, the dark name. Oh, I hear you on that. Sure. We, it, the, the name came about, it was just trying to stand out. Mm -hmm. you know, just, Heck yeah. There's thousands of teams out there. Yes, there is. You know, and you, mm -hmm. you really got to do these little, the, the little itty bitty mm -hmm. things that most people that don't realize to really stand stand out and you set do? yourself apart. You do. You have to have so. kind of like that catch phrase or yeah. that catch vision or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So. Well, yeah. good for you. And what's the other name again? Revenant Research Group. Revenant Research. I like that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I like that. That was that, actually, that was our, uh, that was my stepdad, my brother's dad that came up mm -hmm. with that name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. That's an old word. Being yes. an author, yes, I love is. words yes, and that's an awesome old yeah. word. <laughs> Very cool. And right now, how many members do you have on your team? I'm carrying nine to ten. Uh, we keep a core group of six, but mm -hmm. um, you know how it is. Not everybody can make it. So we got the bench players. You mm -hmm. know, 
one one of our main people can't make it, we we got people available that can fill mm -hmm. the gap. So that way we can't we we can always come to something in full strength, mm -hmm. and we're not really you know telling somebody we're going to come and investigate your your location with our our entire team and group and only show up mm -hmm. with two and a fraction of our gear. Mm -hmm. So we we try to keep a solid bench of people to where we can mm -hmm. always respond in force if need be. Sure, that's a good that's a real good idea. That's so. a that's a for other teams that's a real good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, where do you and your team investigate? Uh, like regional wise, um, all over, all over, <laughs> all over. Um, northern, eastern Nevada. You know, of course, you know this this general region. Mm -hmm. But we've really spent a lot of time in like the mother load area of California. Mm -hmm. So it's basically everything from Nevada City down to Bishop. We we tried to get into. Is that right? Yeah. Oh my gosh! And how come you chose that area? Because it's mother load. I mean, you, you take into account <laughs> yes. the, the history. It was just, oh. it was lawless, mm -hmm. you know, and there, there was no records on people, how people died or passed away. There, there was violence that was unrecorded. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, there was, this happened, but where's the rest of the record? You know, there's just so much that happened up there mm -hmm. that, and there's so little documentation because of how things were back in the 1800s. They didn't write everything. Sure. Right. So, but yeah, I mean, you, you take into account how many people were going up there and all the energy people were expending mm -hmm. into trying to strike it rich, mm -hmm. and oh, true. you know, all, all these events happening that you know, I did, the place is just saturated with it. Mm -hmm. So it, it's really hard to not go there. So. Well, that I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. it would be hard not to. What's your most favorite little community or, or town over there? There's mainly Sonora. We've done most of our work up there in Sonora and outlying. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we've, we've established a pretty good relationship with the, with the town and business people in Sonora. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, it's why we now have a headquarters out of there now. So You have a headquarters in Sonora? Yeah, yeah, that's our uh, one of our central regional headquarters now there in uh, Coors Gold, California. Really? Yeah. We'll expand. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, we're branching ourselves out. That way we can cover as much region as, po uh, region as, as possible. Well, sure. Do you live in Sonora now? No, um, our historian lives in Sonora. Oh, even oh, okay, that's awesome. Yeah, and our other historian lives in Coors Gold, I'm, mm -hmm. and I live down in Lone Pine, and okay. the rest of the team's here in Reno. Oh, goodness sakes, well, you really are dispersed mm -hmm. in a wide area. Then. Yeah, that way we can respond anywhere we need to within the region without having to fully call on everybody if need be. That is awesome. I like that yeah. idea. I mean, because I mean, you, we, you know how you have the preliminaries. You go in, just kind of get a feel for the place, see mm -hmm. what's going on. Mm -hmm. You don't have to bring the whole team. For right. That. Mm -hmm. that you know that way we can send one or two people from the region. Mm -hmm. They're only an hour out. We can have them there. They'll come see what's going on. They'll mm -hmm. they'll report back to the team, and then we'll organize and we'll come in there and see what's going on. So. Wow, this is really a wonderful association that yeah. you have. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a business. That, that's how we look yeah. at it. That's how we've taken it from day one. Mm -hmm. Is I mean, you, yeah, yeah. People look at it as a as a hobby, sure. but t to us, it's a passion, and this this is our work. Mm -hmm. So if this is the work and the work we're doing, mm -hmm. then yeah, we got to treat it as a business and run it like a business. Well, that's something new. I did not know that yeah. about you. Yeah. I learn something new every <laughs> time I have a show. <laughs> Well, this is wonderful. That is wonderful. And so, um, when you go into these communities, um, do you uh, just investigate uh, uh, like businesses or old buildings or homes, or do you go in the mines or everything? Everything. Yeah, I mean, if, mm -hmm. if there's a reported haunt, and if we can get into it, mm -hmm. we're going to check it out. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, it's people calling us. It's you know their business. It's mm -hmm. and you know we're known in the region, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and businesses are saying, I, I got activity, and, you know, Sinister Sightings is, you know, we got a footprint there, so we can respond, and so. Very, very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Now, how many uh, investigations do you do there, average, in a year? Uh, last year in the region, we just did three, but so far we got five set up for this mm -hmm. year, and that's already expanding. Nice. So, I, I have a feeling we're spending all year up there this year. Very nice. So. Well, you have to get over the passes. Yeah, yeah. Darn gotta, winter doesn't want to go you gotta away. Got to get past January. Uh, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Gosh, I hear you on that. Um, well, how do you investigate? If you could expand on that a little bit, um, you were just mentioning that you have the preliminaries, mm -hmm. and then how do you go about 
investigating, like let's say, um, a business that's there? Well, first first things first, we're gonna get the, the accounts and whatever information on the property we can from the business owner. Oh, nice. After nice. that, we're gonna start reaching out to like the county, looking for property records, um, even um, police records, if we can find them. Um, genealogy reports on anybody linked to that property we come across. I mean, full on historical research, I mean, until we get to the bottom of the barrel. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Oh, well, I am very happy you do that. Yeah, well, we consider ourselves historians first, investigators second. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, viewers, isn't he cool? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, we, we got um, uh, Coors Gold, one of our investigators, she's a history teacher. <laughs> so we have a historian there, and mm -hmm. then um, Billy in Sonora, she's a curator of Tuolumne County Museum. So again, we have another oh, historian goodness. there. Oh. So and then myself, I I love history. Uh, history. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we got three historians on the team. Isn't oh, I think that's fascinating. So, that's fabulous. Yeah, because that way, if we got multiple locations, we can all set us. You know, I can. This person's working on this history. I'm mm -hmm. working on this one. You're working on that one. Mm -hmm. Or if we got a big location, all three of us come together and just yeah, dig up what we can. Wow, that is fabulous. Mm -hmm. I love paranormal investigators that are historians. Well, you take into account the the, the people, the spirits that are still there, they're mm -hmm. part of that history. Mm -hmm. So as we're doing the history, we gotta come at them and say, well, you're part of this history too, but where's your voice in the story of this property? Oh gosh, this is fabulous. So that, that's how we've always approached it. Well, Jason, I'm very proud of you and your team. <laughs> well, thank you. I've met a lot of teams, they just go in there and want to provoke the spirits. They want the and, thrills and... Yeah, yeah and the and sensationalism, and it's like, yeah. no. Well, I'll blame all these TV shows for that. <laughs> <laughs> you are conducting that superbly. Appreciate Magnificently. that. Magnificently. <laughs> well, we, you know, we got, we got a young team, you know, and I'm trying to teach them to do it right instead of going in for the thrills and doing things wrong. You know, trying to teach these young guys that are the next generation mm -hmm. to come up and do this properly. Good for you. So. Oh, good for you. Well, does your team use electronics and devices? Oh, absolutely. Too? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We uh, that's purely what we use. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we have two or three sensitives on the team, but we don't count on it because we can't back up feelings. Sure. You know, mm -hmm. if someone sees something, but it's not on camera. It's an experience. You get a feeling. It's an experience. Mm -hmm. We we put it to use. It's a, it's uh, a useful right. tool. I mean, mm -hmm. and really anybody, if you're paying attention to your body. Mm -hmm. and how it's reacting to yes. your environment around you. I mean, a anybody's really a useful tool as mm -hmm. long as you're paying attention. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we, we focus on the technology side. That way, if we do catch something, we can say we have it on film. Right. We have it on audio. Mm -hmm. it, you know, we, we can't mm -hmm. say, oh, I heard this, here's your evidence. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you use great big huge electronic equipment? No, um, we don't. <laughs> we, we, all the stuff that you see selling now nowadays and that they're using on TV, we actually don't use. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> I'm on it. I have an engineering degree in electronics, so oh. I, I know what technologies out yeah. there for EMF and this and that right. that you don't have to go spend seventy, eighty dollars on because you saw it on TV and you think that's the right thing to use. Mm -hmm. You can find better stuff for Listen. ten dollars. Uh -huh. Right. You know, I mean, everybody wants to use a K two, and I'm using a K moon that I got for fifteen dollars. Nice. <laughs> you know? nice, and it, it, yeah. it measures multiple EMF fields instead of just one. Well, that sounds fascinating, and I think that you have that device with you. I do. This is a, <laughs> this is a K Moon GM thirty one twenty. You find this in electrical supplies online. Oh, nice. This, mul this will measure your E field and H fields of EMFs. Really? Yeah, you okay. have multiple different. There's multiple types of EMF fields, so this will actually measure two different types. And it'll show you if you're getting into uh, like um, harmful levels. Because oh. you, you know how there's hypersensitivity to electromagnetism. Sure, sure. This will measure that and it'll tell you, okay, there's too much here. And it'll start beeping at you. I'll be darned. Yeah. Well, it's beeping. We must have uh, spirits around here. <laughs> it's actually very sensitive. Yeah. Incredibly well, my sensitive. dad's always here, so hi, Dad. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, so this yeah, is this nice. is, I mean, I got this for about $15 on Amazon and electrical supplies. Electrical supplies. Yeah. Okay. So. Boy, that's fascinating. Yeah, it's been handy tool. 
Nice. I'll take a picture of that, viewers, and and mm. and uh, show that while he's speaking of it. Yeah. Well, that's really nice. What else do you use? Do you take in like big computers and things laptop? Like that? Mm -hmm. We don't we don't go in. We used to have use DVRs, but it's just so much of a hassle. I mean, we sometimes you got a limited amount of time to prep mm -hmm. before you yes. do an investigation. Mm -hmm. So it, it you know breaking out all these wires and cameras mm -hmm. and running them, you're, you're killing about an hour of what time you have. Oh, and I mean, every minute's valuable mm -hmm. when you're doing an investigation. Sure. And do you have different uh, or certain recorders? Uh, yeah, we uh, stick to Olympus. We, we've really been happy with those. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, one, of, one of the ones we like the most, we can actually put headphones in and listen to the amplification live. So, nice. uh, men, yeah, many of, <laughs> many, of our, uh, many of our recordings that you'll hear, you'll actually hear us respond to it yes. because we actually heard it because mm -hmm. of the, the microphone we were listening to. Isn't that nice? So Very nice. Well, being you have a degree in electronics, you could just really let our viewers know exactly <laughs> what the good technology is out there. Well, mm -hmm. first thing, just don't spend the money on the stuff you see on TV because you don't need to. You really mm -hmm. don't need to. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the REM pods that you see selling for several hundred dollars, you can get, you can get a, a REM pod for 20 bucks. If you're really? looking in the right place, mm -hmm. and right. it's, it's going to give you the same. Th it's going to give you the same measurements and readings that the three hundred dollar one will do. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so, for that. Sure. Yeah. So sure, there's a lot of uh, teams out there that they think they should go out and spend thousands of dollars. Unnecessary, and, completely mm -hmm. unnecessary. Mm -hmm. I mean, started twenty fifteen years ago. You know, it was a twenty dollar you know cassette recorder with the little tiny cassette in mm -hmm. it, and you know a high eight uh, video camera. Mm -hmm. And that, that was basically what was being carried. You know? And they worked, yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I mean, all this technology nowadays, it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of weird to see where it's all coming from, you know. Mm -hmm. so. Well, it's all for ghost hunting. Yeah. It's, so, yeah. interesting. Well, thank you for that. I'm, I'm going to go look for one of those. Yeah, That's no, cool. they're, they're a great little tool. <laughs> what is the scariest place that you've been? And I really don't like to use that word scary. I like to say most interesting. <laughs> I, I'd say the most intense. Intense. That's Mo a good the one. most intense location we've done was the Jackson House Hotel in Eureka. Uh, we've spent s eight nights. Uh, they gave us the hotel two times for a total of eight nights, so we can thoroughly go through it. And it got got intense sometimes. Did it? Yeah, we had uh, and several. I'm going of the, there. Yeah, several of the female investigators on our team um, were attacked our first time there. Is that yeah. right? And I'm not. It's not demonic. I'm gonna put that oh, out there sure. right now. Yeah, and I kind of no, de no, no demons. Right, no demons. <laughs> he, he, he's just uh, he he likes his space. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, we we he'll they'll mess with you when you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. sure. Yeah, I mean, the last time we were there it was four o'clock in the morning. We called it a night because we had another long night ahead of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was laying down back in the suite by myself because late at night that's the most intense place. Okay. Is this, uh, Jackson Suite upstairs. Okay. So, of course, I'm going to be the one to volunteer and sleep in. Oh. <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had only been, this is our second trip there. I had, I had only been asleep for like a half hour, and all of a sudden I, I got woken up by what sounded like an earthquake. Ooh, Problem was, on the recordings, nothing. Nothing. But it shook my room so, so intensely yeah. that it woke me up. And so I turned on my recorder. You know, it's like, and it stops. It's like, of okay, course. Well, I'm gonna go back to bed, and as I'm as I'm laying back down, I hear a man, and woman whispering outside the door, and we do believe it's the Vanderlice. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it's uh, Jacob and Audrey Vanderlice. They owned okay. it back in the 1800s. Okay. And um, then after the talking stopped, I didn't get it on recording, but I I looked at our cameras that we had running outside of it, and. Honestly, I was thinking it was one of, some of the team just messing with me. Because okay. we do it, you know, sure. everybody's yeah, going to sleep, we're in a haunted okay. location, I'm going to knock on your door and run away. Right. <laughs> so, well, sure. Well, yeah, we're going to have fun. But I checked cameras, everybody was asleep, no one was messing around. But after the voices stopped, I'm sitting there, I'm laying there, and all of a sudden I hear heavy footsteps run from the doorway to the bed that I was sleeping in. Oh. So, yeah, it, it gets very intense, and it can be very overwhelming mm -hmm. sometimes if you're, if you're, if you don't realize what you're walking into uh -huh. yeah any other buildings are that active there in uh, eureka well most of them mm -hmm. yeah we've done 12 investigations at 10 locations there just oh, last God. year wow and uh I'd, I'd say seven or eight of them we did find evidence mm -hmm. and with you 
take into account the tunnels that run under the town. That it That's would, right. Yeah, it all used to be linked mm -hmm. to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. We may not be able to get through them, mm -hmm. but to the spirit, those tunnels are still there. Oh, exactly. And we, that, for the longest time, we called them the nomad because everywhere we investigated, it, it seemed like we ran into the same entity. Really? Yeah. I'll be done. But again, we did find at least three of them. We did prove that nice. it was the same entity. Isn't that yeah. exciting? And, and these are all locations like a block away from each other. So Really? Yeah. And they're all connected uh, with the tunnels? In yeah, there? and one of the most intact tunnel systems is under the Eureka Motel, which is going to be part of the Paracon as well. Mm -hmm. So intricate brickwork. There's a huge cathedral underground. It's like, uh, yeah, it's like uh, 60 feet long, 20 feet wide by 20 feet tall. And it, when you're when you're standing in there, your feet are about thirty feet underground. But it's just beautiful brickwork underground that was done by the Italians when they settled oh, it. Oh, sure. Yeah. What was your longest investigation? Not necessarily in Eureka, but you stay anywhere your longest. Probably my house when I was younger. Oh, <laughs> I like I had, that. I had no choice. Right. Yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah. So yeah, we lived there for several years, and it was mm -hmm. all the time I was. My, my dad never had any experiences, but I did. It, mm -hmm. it was always surrounded by me. You know, a chair moving across the room when I'm sitting in there. I just Ooh, nice. scoots across the room, uh -huh. you know, it's stuff like that. And it got to the point I was like, now i got to find out what's going on. Oh, <laughs> well, so sure. Was, you know, which is tough when you're 13 and you don't really understand. Mm -hmm. I get that. Yeah. You know, yeah. But, you know, was, who else was going to help me? I didn't, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't like it is today where, right. you know, you can throw a rock and you're going to hit a team somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there, there wasn't no, there weren't, there weren't teams like there are mm -hmm. 20 right. years ago. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I just kind of just had to figure it out on my own. Well, did your brothers and sisters, or well, you said your dad didn't, but your mom, did they have any experiences? Or? Yeah, they've, uh, my brother and my mom and my sister had experiences in my mom's house. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe the land, it was because of the land. Yes. Um, because that same entity has been seen in the next door house and one across the street. I'll be darned, isn't that interesting? Yeah. yeah. So so we've, we've spent some time trying to figure out what was going on mm -hmm. in their house, but yeah, I'm, my brother grew up in that house having mm -hmm. experiences, so he mm -hmm. kind of grew up how I did. Interesting, very interesting. Do you think that any of them have followed you around in your adult life, or? Not the ones no. from there, no. Mm -hmm. um, the, everybody that was having experiences, they all got like, um, like patron saint medals or crosses, okay. um, bless and put up in the house and it stopped. And it stopped, yeah. okay, sure. I'll be darned, okay. Interesting, so you've had experiences, well, all of your all life. life. Yeah. yeah. Have they ever terrified you or? Well, when I was eight, yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, sure, yeah, I can Because I, I didn't know what was going on. All right. I knew was I just saw a black shadow walk down my hallway, block out a light from the living room and mm. disappear into a wall. So, that would be terrifying, yeah, especially. Yeah, it was scary. Yeah. So, I'll yeah. be darned. Are you still scared now? No. no, no oh, no, okay. I, You're brave. I'm, I'm usually the first one running in. So. Oh, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. What was your most favorite investigation? I, I think the one that meant the most to the team that really kind of got the team off the ground and separated us from the thousands of others out there was um, the Tuolumne County Museum in Sonora, California. Really? Yeah, because that, that led to a lot of like publicity in the area that we weren't really expecting. You know, we were just going in there to do a job. Oh. But yeah, it, it led to a lot of getting our getting our name out there more uh -huh. than we really realized it would. And we didn't really intend for it to do, but it nice. did. Oh. So the, the, the step it helped for the team to take okay. is that's why it's so important. Nice. Were you in the newspaper? Yeah, or? we've uh, done two newspapers in the area surrounded by the location uh -huh. and then we've done a uh, hour and a half presentation in front of 120 people at the library and we did um nice. releasing and we didn't release none of the evidence online before this we were going to release uh -huh. it to the town showing the town their own uh -huh. haunts and their own evidence before we released it to anybody else oh that's so, so nice of you yeah. that is a professional thing to do <laughs> nice 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 Awesome. Yeah. So the entire town was your investigation, basically, or? I would say the entire town. It was, I mean, it was centered on a, you know, a historical piece of, sure, you know, sure. historical landmark in mm -hmm. town. And it just, word spread real fast mm -hmm. that we were there. And, and all of a sudden, next thing we knew, we were standing up in front of 120 people. 
You know, Isn't that fun? Yeah, it was tough. I wasn't expecting it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they, they told me 10, 12. I was like, I can do that. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know. I said it was 10 times that. I was a little nervous. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. I can understand mm -hmm. that. You bet. Public speaking sometimes is yeah. not easy. <laughs> yeah. But no, it was fun. You know, everybody was really into it. A lot uh -huh. of people were asking questions. And nice. So, yeah, mm -hmm. now, now we're doing a lot of work in the area. That's nice. You're helping them. I'm helping them understand. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And who's in their home or their business. Right. I think that's what's fascinating. You'll find Uncle George in your in your house. <laughs> it's like, hey, come to dinner. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, we we've you know gone gone into a business property to do an investigation and found out somebody working there. It's a family member following them. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they're having experiences of work. Mm -hmm. So because they're not doing it the way the spirit exactly, is. <laughs> they're not selling that problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that fun? Well, now what do you do to advertise to gain other investigations? I don't. I wouldn't really say that we advertise. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, it's mm -hmm. use, everything that's gotten our name out there came to us and mm -hmm. helped us get our name out there. Mm -hmm. We honestly just stuck to. Keeping to ourselves, mm -hmm. doing sure. our work, yeah. and just basically just nonstop cold calls and emails. Mm -hmm. Just you know, hey, this you know, here's our resume. Mm -hmm. You know, here's what here's the work we've done. Right. Yeah, it's just basically just having good relationships with clients mm -hmm. and them being able to say, well, you know, we'd, we'd be happy to speak on your behalf. Mm -hmm. So nice references that you're getting. Well, yeah, we've been mm -hmm. trying. Mm -hmm. We've been trying. And word of mouth, you know, that's what I see is. Uh, most helpful yeah and we and we have an online presence but we don't like social media oh, but right. we don't focus on it we don't put everything we don't put everything behind our social media mm -hmm. presence mm -hmm. and we really just focus on doing the work mm -hmm. well that's just being discreet and being pro professional yeah. too well that's how most of us were before we started the team was mm -hmm. discreet mm -hmm. oh so, sure yeah yeah so nice. the, this whole public eye thing has really been new to us the last couple of years mm -hmm. so We'll get ready for more. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, no, it's been nonstop, so. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Awesome. Well, speaking of, can you tell our uh, viewers how people can contact you? Uh, yeah, you can get a hold of us at 775-276-1774, um, or you can get a hold of us on at www.sinistersightingsparanormal.com, and there's a link to email us. Nice. Facebook? Oh, yeah, Facebook, but usually it's emails <laughs> yeah, and yeah. phone calls. Okay, so. awesome. Yeah. Very nice. Well, uh, let's see. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You got anything more to say? No, I sure yeah, don't. I think we covered, covered it all. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, okay, let me give you five, four, three... Well, I want to thank you very, very much for being this awesome guest. Oh, I appreciate you today. having me. I enjoyed it. Well, thank you. I learned so much from you, and um, we really appreciate what you do, you and your team. Oh, thank you, and we appreciate what you guys do, too. Oh, well, thank you. We're cool, aren't right. we? <laughs> <laughs> We're all one big family. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you so much for watching Psychic Creations. And if you would like to be a guest on our show, please contact me at my website, which is www.sandypsychicstones.com or at my email address, which is admin at sandypsychicstones.com. Please note that the content of Paranormal, and we get to meet fascinating guests, just like Jason Nelms. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for watching Psychic Creations, and we'll see you next show.